Hello, my name is Roy Beiswinger, and I want to talk to you about the Sport Pilot Certification and Privileges in the FAA Mosaic Rule Proposal. The focus here is on the FAA discussion of directional control and controlled descent of powered aircraft, sport pilot operational privileges, and night operations. In the description, you will find a link to the FAA's Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, and PRM, as well as links to other resources. Remember, I'm just letting you know what is in the NPRM. By reading the FAA's words, I'm not necessarily endorsing the FAA's text or methods. In fact, I'm wanting you to listen closely to their words because these are the rules you will have to live under. This is meant to be a class on the document. I refer you to the original document for precise language. Let's continue the discussion on sport pilot certification and privileges. So that you get the scope of everything in this section, here is the list of individual items. Here in mosaic number 20, we'll talk about directional control and controlled descent of powered aircraft, sport pilot operational privileges, and specifically night operations. Directional control and controlled descent of powered aircraft. Currently, the light sport aircraft definition does not expressly require an aircraft to have the capability to maintain directional control and a controlled descent in the event of a power plant failure. The omission of this requirement in the regulations does not present a safety concern at this time because this control requirement is inherent in airplane manufacture and design and the light sport aircraft definition excludes helicopters and powered lift. For example, airplanes have the ability to maintain directional control and a controlled descent in the event of a partial or total power plant failure. Given the aerodynamics, a pilot can normally glide the airplane to a safe landing if the power plant stops functioning. As discussed in another section of this preamble, the FAA is proposing to permit sport pilots to operate certain kinds of helicopters. However, the ability to maintain directional control and a controlled descent in the event of a power plant failure is not inherent in all new helicopter designs, specifically multi-copters. Some new helicopters may not possess the ability to auto-rotate to a safe landing in the event of a power plant failure. To fit the construct of the FAA safety continuum, as well as the expectation for the use of new aircraft that could be safely operated by sport pilots, the FAA has determined that any aircraft, except balloons and airships, that a sport pilot operates must have the capability to establish a controlled descent and directional control in the event of a partial or complete power plant failure. Therefore, the FAA proposes in Section 61.316H that a person with a sport pilot certificate may only act as PIC for those powered aircraft, which could include multi-copters, whereby the loss of partial power would not adversely affect the directional control of the aircraft. Specifically, Section 61.316 describes the sport pilot aircraft performance limitations and would require in proposed paragraph H that powered aircraft must provide the pilot an ability to maintain directional control and controlled descent in the event of a power plant failure. As proposed, if the aircraft does not possess these capabilities, excluding balloons and airships, a sport pilot would not be able to act as PIC of the aircraft. This requirement would ensure that any aircraft a sport pilot operates is simple to control in the event of a power plant failure, consistent with the aircraft that sport pilots are currently permitted to operate. Therefore, while the FAA proposes to expand the types of aircraft that sport pilots may operate, the FAA intends to permit sport pilots to operate only those aircraft that would require skills commensurate with the skills of a sport pilot today. Notably, despite the implicit inclusion of this feature for airplanes, the FAA is not proposing to limit this requirement to helicopters. The FAA reasons that manufacturers may contemplate future airplane or other aircraft designs that do not include an inherent aerodynamic ability for the pilot to maintain directional control and a controlled descent in the event of a power plant failure. The FAA proposes to impose this requirement for all powered aircraft that a sport pilot may seek to operate as PIC, so advancements in airplane technology would include this feature. This requirement would appropriately mitigate the risk to persons both on board the aircraft and on the ground that may be impacted by a power plant failure emergency. Sport Pilot Operational Privileges Section 61.315 currently specifies the privileges and limitations of a sport pilot certificate. Currently, under Section 61.315 C5, sport pilots are prohibited from conducting night operations. 
Also, the Section 1.1 light sport aircraft definition currently prohibits sport pilots from operating aircraft equipped with retractable landing gear, except for amphibious aircraft and gliders, and aircraft with a controllable pitch propeller. However, the FAA contends that, with the completion of additional training and obtaining a flight instructor qualifying endorsement, sport pilots can safely conduct these types of flight operations. Therefore, the FAA is proposing to add an exception to Section 61.315C5 that would permit a sport pilot to conduct night operations if the sport pilot meets certain training, endorsement, and experience requirements, which the FAA is proposing in new 61.329. These provisions are discussed in greater detail in the next section. Likewise, the FAA is proposing to add a new provision in Section 61.315C20 that would prohibit sport pilots from acting as pilot in command of an airplane with a retractable landing gear or a controllable pitch propeller unless a sport pilot meets the training and endorsement requirements proposed in Section 61.331. Night Operations As previously discussed, sport pilots are currently prohibited from conducting night operations. Section 1.1 defines night as the time between the end of evening civil twilight and the beginning of morning civil twilight, as published in the Air Almanac, converted to local time. In support of the proposal to permit sport pilots to conduct night operations, the FAA acknowledges that many states in the U.S. have reduced daylight hours during the winter months. During those days with reduced daylight, sport pilots may be under pressure to complete a flight even after sunset due to weather or delays from unexpected events. A sport pilot who conducts an operation at night, as defined in Section 1.1, is in noncompliance with the current prohibition in Section 61.315C5. The FAA emphasizes that noncompliance with the FAA's regulations is unacceptable and subject to compliance or enforcement action. The FAA recognizes, however, that the reduced daylight hours in many northern states may result in sport pilots experiencing pressure to conduct flights before night. Due to unseen circumstances, these flights may become marginally non-compliant as they near the end of evening civil twilight. Because a sport pilot is not currently required to receive training for operating at night, any sport pilot operations that occur after the end of evening civil twilight create a safety risk. To mitigate that risk, the FAA proposes to permit sport pilots to qualify to operate at night by meeting certain training and experience requirements and by obtaining an endorsement from an authorized instructor. The FAA finds that, with this added training, the window of time during which sport pilots may conduct operations would be expanded, thereby promoting better aeronautical decision-making by reducing the pressure on sport pilots to conduct flights within a certain period of time. Specifically, to validate that sport pilots possess the necessary skill to safely navigate at night, the FAA proposes the following risk mitigation training requirements in new Section 61.329. Under proposed Section 61.329A, a sport pilot must receive at least three hours of flight training at night from an authorized instructor and receive a logbook endorsement certifying that they are proficient in the operation of the aircraft at night. In addition, proposed Section 61.329B requires that the sport pilot conduct at least one cross-country night flight with a landing at an airport at least 25 nautical miles from the departure point, except for powered parachutes. Proposed Section 61.329C would require the sport pilot to accomplish at least 10 takeoffs and landings at night with an authorized instructor. Proposed Section 61.329D would also set forth certain medical requirements. The pilot in command must either hold a medical certificate issued under Part 67, Subpart D, Third Class Airman Medical Certificate, or meet the requirements of Section 61.23C3 as long as the person holds a valid U.S. driver's license. Additionally, the operation would be required to be conducted consistent with Section 61.113I if there is any conflict between Section 61.113I and proposed Section 61.315D4, then proposed Section 61.315D4 would take precedence. A sport pilot may receive the night training and endorsement specified in Section 61.329 from a person who holds either a flight instructor certificate issued under Subpart H of Part 61 or a flight instructor certificate with a sport pilot rating. 
However, before a flight instructor with a sport pilot rating may provide the night training and endorsement to a sport pilot seeking night privileges, the flight instructor must first receive the training and endorsement themselves. The FAA is, therefore, proposing to amend Section 61.415, which prescribes the limits of a flight instructor certificate with a sport pilot rating, by adding new paragraph N to state that a flight instructor with a sport pilot rating may not provide training in an aircraft at night unless they have completed the night training and endorsement requirements specified in proposed Section 61.329. The FAA notes that, upon publication of the final rule, there would be no sport pilot instructors who satisfy the new night training and endorsement requirements of Section 61.329. Thus, as an initial matter, sport pilot instructors would receive the night training and endorsement from a subpart H flight instructor. The FAA notes that the requirements in proposed Section 61.329 largely mirror those required of private pilots who conduct operations at night as set forth by Section 61.109, as well as current sport pilot experience requirements under Section 61.313. The FAA recognizes that these training requirements are appropriate for private pilots to obtain the knowledge and skills necessary to conduct night operations safely and reasons that a sport pilot should conduct the same night training requirements before acting as pilot in command at night. After this training has been completed, the sport pilot would receive the endorsement from the authorized instructor, at which point they would be able to conduct night operations. Currently, Section 61.315C5 explicitly restricts a sport pilot from acting as pilot in command at night. Therefore, as previously stated, the FAA proposes to amend Section 61.315C5 by adding an exception for sport pilots who seek privileges to operate an aircraft at night. Amended Section 61.315C5 would restrict night operations, except as provided in Proposed 61.329, which would contain the night operation training, experience, and endorsement requirements. The FAA notes that a sport pilot seeking to act as pilot in command of an aircraft carrying a passenger at night would be required to satisfy the recent flight experience requirements in current Section 61.57b. Thanks for making it all of the way to the end of this video. Here are a couple things I believe are worth mentioning about this. An incredibly useless regulation is FAA's proposed Section 61.316H, or Section 61.316A7 as it is really referred to in the NPRM. The FAA has determined that there may be a problem with directional control with helicopters or vertical lift and controlled descent upon engine failure. The FAA probably rightfully wants helicopter designs to be able to establish a controlled descent in the event of a power failure. Fine. But then the FAA says that even though it's not a problem right now, they want to leave that requirement in for all light sport aircraft. You know, just in case. How about this, FAA? If there isn't a problem, let's not regulate it. Another regulation is just going to generate more unnecessary testing and paperwork for manufacturers. Those wasted motions will increase the cost of aircraft for the public. Let's try this instead. If a problem actually arises, then regulate it. Meanwhile, what are operations people doing defining aircraft certification standards? It seems the flight standard services staffers are playing in the aircraft certification staffers sandbox. Sport pilots getting the privilege of flying at night sounds pretty awesome. However, flying at night looks like it's going to require either the minimum of third class medical or basic med. The problem is a third class medical doesn't require a night vision test. So what exactly is the point of the third class medical requirement? Anyway, that's it for mosaic number 20. Please comment and like the video if you got value from it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you can get more of the good stuff. Thanks so much for watching and blue skies.